Psalms 32, 8, James 1, 5. Some people need shifts. All right. The word of the Lord says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Tonight, for a few minutes, I want to speak on the secret code of the wise. The secret code of the wise. Let us pray. Some of you prayed because you pray small. You cannot stand up. Let us pray. How many minutes have you prayed? Ayado <laughs> Shalia. The secret code. Tell your neighbor the secret code of the wise. We are in the coding season. The secret code of the wise. Father, thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we come today to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of men. I declare after now we will all be better people. Thank you, O oh God, because the reason for sending your word shall be fulfilled. And after now, your grace will quickly and mightily follow us. We worship you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I have a believing amen? amen? You can have your seat in God's presence. All right. Our God is a God of wisdom. I do not think for making that statement, anybody will argue. I do not also think that you will be given a prize for saying that statement. That our God is a God of wisdom. Even fools have an understanding that God is a God of wisdom. Even the devil knows that God is a God of wisdom. Therefore, if God is a God of wisdom, it therefore becomes imperative. It becomes important for believers to ask, how can I get God to be on my side? How can God be on my corner? If God is the God of wisdom, how can I have access uh, even to this God? Thank you for saving me. <laughs> how can I have access to this wisdom that God gives? How can I gain access even to God? <laughs> Today, I want to speak on a very simple message. It's something that has worked for me. Something that I've seen that has worked for many generals. And if you lay a hold of it, because you see spiritual principles are not complicated. Tell your neighbor, spiritual principles are not complicated. They are simple. Are you tired of preaching? Tell your neighbor, they are simple. So get it. If there's anything we know from scriptures, is that God gives wisdom. God is the major source of it. Listen to this. What many people lack is not money. What many people lack is not relationship. It is not the absence of goals in their life. What they lack is wisdom. And I'm afraid that when I speak of this wisdom, I'm not speaking of wisdom or knowledge that you can gain from Google. I'm not talking about internet. I'm not talking about the fact that you can read books. No. No, no, no. Therefore, the wisdom I'm speaking to you about in this sermon is the wisdom I define as the grace and power of knowing what to do in every situation. The grace and the power, the ability to know what to do in every situation. Knowing what to do in every situation. It is knowing the plans of God and understanding the ways of God in which he will bring his plan to pass in your life. So God has a purpose for your life. God has a plan for your life. But what way will God bring that purpose to pass in your life? That is wisdom. Knowing the ways of God. God has said he's going to make you an apostle. He's going to make you an entrepreneur. You are going to have a business. Now that is the purpose. That's the plan of God for your life. Now, how will God make it come to pass? What are the things I'm supposed to channel my life towards in order to get to the end goal of God? That is wisdom. It is knowing what to do in every situation. One of my most important prayers is, Lord, I will never be stranded in life. Listen, 
Being stranded is not a lack of money. It is mental incapacitation. Not knowing what to do at a particular time. You are stranded. And that's not God's plan for the righteous. It is the grace of knowing which way the Lord will take. Therefore, all you need to do is to align your life with the way God will take. That's wisdom. That is what the wise knows. Wise men, generals, they know the ways of God. And then they align their life to the ways of God. Wise men are not always wise. They are only wise in principles. Let's quickly look at these scriptures. Psalm 32 verse 8. He said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will cancel you with my loving eye. God says, I will teach you. I will instruct you. Oh, you want to be an engineer? Oh, you want to have a code, co coding company? You want to have a tech company? You want to build your business from scratch? He said, I will show you. I will instruct you what you should do. So God is in the business of showing men what they are supposed to do with their life. Psalm 73, 24. 73, 24 Psalms. He said, you will guide me with your counsel and later receive me into glory. You will guide me with your counsel. So God releases his word to his people. God releases his word to men in order to what? To guide them. So you are supposed to go to Abuja. And God said, no, don't take that bus. Go by here. No, don't go by Harika. Go by Overland. God tells you specifically what to do. Why? Because he guides with his counsel. He's the wise God. When you see wise people, they know how to crack into the coding system of God. Your ability to deduce what is God saying in every situation? What is God wanting you to do in every situation? That is wisdom. Oh, Isaiah 48, 17. God says, the Lord your Redeemer, the only one of Israel, and the Lord your God, who teaches you for your benefit. Who lead you by the way you should go. Some crazy folks make decisions. I knew that and begin to pray for the blessings of God for that decision. Wise folks, they get God's decision because that comes with the blessing and they begin to work it out. Tell your neighbor, be wise. Be wise. One of the greatest blessings a believer can have is to gain the mind and the sight of God. To be able to think God's thoughts. To act the way God himself would have acted. To act like God and to be like God in any situation. So they call you, somebody is sick. You say, well, God, what will you do in this situation? God, what is the wisdom here? That is even strategic prayer. You don't just open your mouth and begin to pray. You say, Lord, what is the wisdom here? Oh, he cannot sleep. Should I just go to you give your beloved sleep? No. <laughs> what is the wisdom here? God says, rebook that spirit that's not letting him sleep. And then you do that, you see result. Why? The ways of God. It is time to move into new heights. Listen, there is a reason scripture calls us ambassadors of Christ and citizens of Zion. It suggests that in every situation, we should act just the way God would act. That means seated before me are gods. When they see you, they should not be asking where is God. Because you are going to function, act, be like God. In whatever thing that confronts you. Have you seen God? Do you sometimes think, let me give you this example. God slept and God had a bad dream. And so after God had a bad dream, he started calling angels. What do you think God will do? The exact thing you think God should do is what you should do. God will laugh. God will take authority. God will say, get him behind me, Sarah. That's what you should do. It is time for us to stop being lilipitus. It is time for us to be who God made us to be. It is time for lions to be lions. For donkeys to be donkeys. It is time for you to rise and walk in the high places of the heart. The reason we are where we are is because we are refusing to take our place. And it is time for us 
to be divine agents. We are divine agents. We act like God. When an ambassador of, Niger of U.S. is in Nigeria, he keeps the law of the U.S. in Nigeria. It does not matter what you think. You can't sue him. You can't put him in a court. You can't put him in a prison. Why? He's not governed by the law of Nigeria. He's governed by the law of America. Listen, when people tell you in the final analysis, where are you from? You are from heaven. Hello? You are born again. You are the saints of God. You are not from Nigeria. The laws of this country does not govern you. People may say the world is hard. The world is bad. It does not concern you. It's never your business. You are from heaven where the Lord supply all your needs according to the riches of Christ in glory in heavenly places. He has a city laid of gold. Silver is his, gold is his. Castles of 1,000 years are the Lord. When he says a thing, it becomes so. That is he who sent you here. Not your parents. Oh, of course they had sex. But that's not because that's why you know why you are here. You are here because God sent you. Come on, shout, I'm sent of God. You don't believe it, shout it like you mean it. I'm sent of God. You are an ambassador of no ordinary kingdom. You're an ambassador of heaven. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Say, we are therefore Christ ambassadors. Can I have that very quickly? Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. I need to move, I need to move, I need to move. Second Corinthians say, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you how? On Christ's what? On Christ's behalf. The King James says, in Christ's head. Another time, just say, in the place of Christ. So we plead. Therefore, you are no longer your own. You are here in the place of Christ. At your own place, you are here in Christ's head. Whatever Jesus will do is what you should do. If Jesus will not see you, you should not steal. If Jesus will command a thing, then you should start commanding things. Somebody said, people don't come to my business. Because there are certain people close to me. They are taking away all my businesses. I say, are you okay? <laughs> Stop them. Make them bankrupt. Make them bankrupt. You don't stop them and say, people will start coming to me. You are wasting. Tomorrow they will do it again. So bankrupt them. Close down that shop. Amen? Are you with me? It's in the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God survived violence. All this ephesic Christianity you are doing will not last. In the place of prayer, you, you, you remove all these gadgets. Somebody, somebody is praying. God gave you a scripture. You are looking at your iPad. Oh. You can't sweat on that thing. <laughs> the problem for many is how to access the mind of God. And that's why I'm speaking on the secret code of the wise. I believe uh, today I want to show you one thing you will get if you will walk with God wisely. How do I break and access the coded information of heaven? How do I gain access to God? The secret of success in the kingdom is not in copying what someone else has done, but in staying with God to get the divine blueprint for your life. That's the secret of success in this kingdom. Staying with God. Success in this kingdom is not in doing complicated things. It's in doing simple things. God told me yesterday. He said divine instruction produces supernatural results. Divine instructions produces supernatural results. You are as limited as the level of instruction you receive from God. You are as limited as the level of instruction you receive from God. Listen to this. The first time I traveled out of this country, the very first time, five months before that time, God told me, I wrote it down. Five months, five months, five months. So when people were surprised, I was not. What I am doing today in ministry, what I am doing now, the next level, what we are doing, God told me three years ago. I wrote in a book, you can go and ask me, I should give you. Completely. I am not surprised. You know why? We are breaking the code. We are getting into the mind of God. The secret things belongs to God. But the things that are revealed belongs to angels. Is that what it says? For sons. Someone say, I am a son. Therefore, mysteries should not be mysteries with you. 
God should communicate things with you. People may say, I don't know the mind of God. That should not be your inheritance. That should not be your heritage. There must be a knowing, a deep sense of knowledge. You should know things. I was going to call this much hacking into it. I said, ah, we can't hack the mind of God. That's not a good word. <laughs> Genesis 18, 17. Then the Lord said, shall I add from Abraham what I'm about to do? He said, God himself, he said, shall I? Shall I? Somebody put your name there and read that verse. That's the problem for Christians. If I say I'll give you money, you'll be louder than that. Shall I hide from Fisayo what I am doing? You need to say that to yourself again. It should, it should, it should make you happy. There should be a joy. Shall I hide from Fisayo what I'm about to do? <laughs> Shall I hide? We live here. <laughs> Shall I hide? Amos 3 7. He said, Surely the Lord does nothing. Surely, that was surely it's it, it, it's like an oath. Surely. The Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. He does nothing. You see, you see that? That means there is no action with God. There is no verb with God without telling you first. Before God does it, God says it. The saying comes before the doing. So that when people are surprised, you are thankful. Somebody say, God, God gave me a car. I'm surprised. Ah! We are not. We say, Oluoshe, you did what you said. It's the Lord that keeps covenants. It's the Lord that keeps promises. Proverbs 25 verse 2. Before I tell you these three quotes. Proverbs 25 verse 2. What does he say? <laughs> it is the glory of God to do what? To conceal a matter. So God naturally works in coding things. Though he says it, though he will not do it without telling you, but God's module of parandi is to code things. It is now left for you as a king to do what? To hack it. Search it out. Search it out. How do you search it out? Three things very quickly. And then we are ready to go. This is a very simple message. Some of us are in the business of unlocking and breaking codes. I don't have any other job. If I, that's, if I, that's why we are pastors. <laughs> if I, if a, you are pastoring, a pastor over you cannot break codes. What's he doing? Some of you say you have God's call. God call you. God call. If you cannot break codes, if you don't know what God is doing or what God will do, ah, Baba, stop. Somebody say, I, when you say God say, God say, I get angry. I say, it's not about getting angry. It's about being challenged. See, are you sure it's God? Ah, I said, should I begin to count what he has said and he has done? It's the talk and do. It's the one who says and do it. <laughs> the Bible says he conceives a matter. You must rise and break secrets concerning your life. Someone say, I don't even understand why my life is doing this way. I don't understand why I have strange gifts. I don't understand why. Why? You must know why. What's your job? Man, know yourself. That's your first calling. Your first calling is a calling to yourself. A deep knowledge of you. Paul got to a point. Paul got to a point. Corinthians 5. I think verse 16. Second Corinthians. He said, though we know man after. Is it Romans? Romans. He said, no, we know Christ after the flesh. And now know we no more him. We know him after the spirit now. It's a different level. Yes, that's it. He said now know we him does no longer. If all you know about yourself is six feet tall, three inches, your eyelashes, 
That's all you know. There's trouble. Tell your neighbor there's trouble. What are secret code? It's a coding system used for transmitting messages requiring, that requires brevity or secrecy. So when God sends a message, it's not a talkative. It just says one line, one sentence. That's it. God has a brief and important message concerning your life. And it is asking you, it's asking you, draw closer, draw nearer. It's saying, how bad do you need this? Do you want to know whether to marry that lady or not? You want to know God's thoughts concerning your family? You want to know his plan concerning you going overseas? Do you want to know how the visions he gave you will come to pass? You want to know what are his ways for you? What are his plans? What, are the, what is in the mind of God? Like the song they used to sing. <laughs> Will it continue this way? That's what that song says. There are secret codes you must break. A pastor was talking one day. He said, I was in my room. And I was praying. And God told me, leave where you are right now. And go to a lorry. The story is the story for another day. There's a lady I just knew, passively, just greeted. And she was in a day, on a day, just raised her hand. And God brought my own picture to her. I said, that's your husband. You don't have my number? Nothing. And because God said it, I used my own leg to walk and go and meet her. About one year later, and we got married about three years later. What happened? Because he said it. You must be able to understand the mind of God concerning your life. So how do you break the secret code? Some things you know. I have five minutes to do this. Number one, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. When you worship, you unleash a dimension of God's power. You see God's wisdom operational in your life. The Bible says, he is the Lord. He inhabits the praise of his people. Psalm 22 verse 3. That means when you worship God, God literally comes in and stays there and says, what do you want? When you pray, your prayer goes up. But the Bible says, he inhabits. He comes down to stay when his people worship. You know, we have Christians that don't understand you people. I don't understand why we cannot stay on the straight and narrow and be balanced. So I've seen believers who don't worship. All they do is pray. I've seen believers who don't do the word. All they do is pray. Can't we just... Because you see, you cannot walk in the full dimension of the mind of God except you do these three things. The first one is worship. You are not worshiping because they will tell you to come and sing tomorrow or next week. That's how some of you worship. You see this? Oh, shibarere, oh. You do slow. How are you doing slow when you are in the presence of God? Oh, are you okay? What is that sarcastic? You don't need no madness. Reckless abandon. You just stay there. Oh, Lord, you see, I call it that Mogbe oga o ma ene mo shali lelo edaya edaya Yeshua when we call you you will answer Yeshua men ne ene mo sheke ira mo shane ne no salia eva no eva no shalia talaba fi owe kabi esi talole. He's the Lord Most High. The Lord Most High. What is your name? Karen Namo Shelly Arabos. You are the Lord. You see, as you do that, you are entering into a realm. I don't want you to laugh this away. I'm telling you my life. <laughs> Listen, you are entering into a realm. Some things you are not thinking about before. God will say, what about doing this? What about doing this? I was worshiping God over the course of last week and God had a program in my mind, a hub, <laughs> a Christian hub, a faith and creativity hub in the learning year. We'll do it this year. I was just worshiping. 
the thing was coming. The thing was, I said, ah, how do you, how do you? So I began to ask some people some questions. They didn't know what I was asking. He has, he has, I didn't read it in a book. I entered and I got the blueprints. This is the home of originality. When your spirit connects with the spirit of God. Deep call let on to deep. Ah! Hey, buyer, you are brooding over every. You are causing light to shine. Emma, hey, Emma. In my car, there are seasons in the car. Seasons of hearing the word of God. Seasons of just worship. They don't know why I do that. It has to be complete. <laughs> seasons where it's just only prophets that I'm hearing. Some people say, my wife will say, kill you. Yeah, man, don't worry. Just leave it. Leave it. Man, you are going up. I say, amen. Kakoba kano mayeda. Eswadaya. Many people have shut down God's voices in their life because they have shut down the worship. The more you worship God, the more of Him you have. And the more of God you have, the more secret is revealed to you. In midnight hour, Paul and Silas, they praised. <laughs> I love the way Tommy Tinis put it. The God inhabit the praise of His people. As they were worshiping God, <laughs> God came down. I God came down. I God sealed them. As they sang that song, God just tapped his feet. As they tapped his feet, there was an earthquake. Do you understand that? If I say, as they worship, there was an earthquake. He just tapped his feet. Not to now say, ah! Oh! That finish. Finish. Why? Because as they said it, creative power came down. Even when the chains fell, there was an earthquake. The doors were open. The, the, the jailer ran inside. Say, ah! Those who jail you will come and say, what happened? Why are you free? Why? Because you worship. I tell people you can pray wrong, you can never worship wrong. Never. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. Number two, stay in the world. Stay in the world. God's presence is guaranteed in his word. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Where the word of the king is. There is power. Ah, Psalm 19 verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. That simple is the foolish. Making wise the foolish. At certain times we all have our areas of foolishness. Uh, things we don't know what to do, what to do, what situation, how to get out of a particular situation. God make you wise. Because you sit in his word. I stayed in his word. And then ideas start coming. Fresh revelation. I just know. I just know. People say, how do you know? I don't know. I just know. I just know. I can't explain it to a dummy. I don't know. You have to grow in your spirit. That's how you know. You just know. There are things I know. That if you tell me that Mr. Allen is a woman, I will believe you than, believe, than changing my mind about that thing. I say, oh, perhaps that's why he's big. That's why he's big on the downside. Perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. But I won't, I won't believe that. That what I know. When God called me, I came to, I told him. I said, you can convince that my name is not Mr. Adeni. You can convince me. I was not there when they gave out to me. I was, not alive. I was not active. I didn't know. Maybe they didn't do naming. They just said, let's just give him a name. I said, perhaps. But you can never tell me God did not call me. <laughs> if I can believe that you're a demo, then I'm believing that God did not call me. <laughs> there was no proof. But I knew who I'm seeing. I knew who I had seen. What I have seen, tasted, and undoed of the word of life, Peter said. You can't lie to us. You can't tell us these things. We are with him on the holy mountain. We know what we saw. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 15. Paul said, and from that of a child that has known the only scripture which is able to make you wise. As you read the word of God, pay attention to the voice of the spirit in your spirit. You see, there are certain thoughts that come when you read the word of God. You are not thinking about it before. It just jumped at you. Something just saved into you. Somebody said, just call that person. Pray for that person. 
You can't, you should not travel. Are you sure you want to do that, make that decision? Don't quiet in those voices. Write them down and pay attention to those things. Because your spirit is communing with the spirit of God. Am I helping somebody? Finally, number three. You must learn. You remember Act 38? Ah, I say Act 38, God. Act 10. In the house of Cornelius. You know Peter did not preach for the Holy Spirit to come down. He did not pray. As he spoke, the Holy Spirit came upon them. What did he speak? The word of God. As you speak the word of God, <laughs> if you have never around mad in the place of, of reading the scriptures, you have not been reading scriptures. Ah! Sometimes, woman of God, we'll be reading like this. <laughs> when we say we, it's we. I, myself, and I. Three of us, triune in nature, we are there. Spirit, soul, and body. And then I see something, I say, Ah! <laughs> ah! Devil is a mad guy. This thing is here. I read it again. And then, and then the inspiration comes. And then he enlightens it. Ah! I say, ah! And then you sit down, you calm down. <laughs> You've done that kind of madness before. I was in base in one day. I saw that your eyes of understanding may be enlightened. God said it's not open, it's enlightened. I say, ah. I said, that's why. I open it, it's not showing us. It's light. So when light comes, you see, I ran out of the house. Say, ah! ah, ah hallelujah! Ah. So people are walking, they now came out, training ministers. What is that? What is that? Ah. So they came to the door. Said, ah, when in Bible, you know, for that, you know me. If you know me, you know me. I will just, just look. I say, what is that? What's that? The word you read is not a letter, it's a spirit. Listen what that means. It means that it is alive forever. Whenever you read it, you get new revelations and new inspiration from it. It's a spirit, it is not a letter. Finally, finally, number three, pray in the spirit. As you pray in the spirit, you must ensure that the channel of your spirit is open to receive information from God. Oh, channel of my spirit, open up. I am with the Father, open up. No boundaries, no limits, open up. <laughs> hey, God knows that I'm not normal today. <laughs> because as you pray, you will move and shake territories. This is where you get the movers and shakers from. I pray to a level that there was no voice coming out. And I was still praying. And I was still opening my mouth. When we say we died there, we mean it literally. Forget all this FBC, all this band. Those who stay with me know when I enter that room, you can't even come into the room now. Because you will see the whole thing just shaking. So when he goes up like that, he will now get to my mind. When we almost die. The spirit is praying. The, the body has finished. But the spirit is still going. I have seen tremendous things in the place of prayer. As I pray, I thought the treasure chest of God. And it begins to release ideas. Oh, I just begin to unchain and unbody mysteries. I know what to do because God tells me what to do. He leads me by still waters. I walk wisely. Your level of divine guidance will proportionally decide your level of success in life. Many times when believers say, I don't know what to do, it's because they are not reading the scriptures, praying in the spirit, and worshiping enough. We have the potential to just be lopsided. Because you are going to a prayer church now, all you do is prayer. Because you are going to a word church, you say you just, you just read the word and you, call, and you do confession. The one to get you. Ah! They are setting you up. You are confessing. Confession is good. He has his place. Prayer has his place. 
prayer, all sophisticated prayers. Prayers, strategic prayers. Prayers, all manners of prayers. Prayers in the morning, in the evening, at night. Prayers. What are you praying about? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just praying. They are, you, are just, you are wasting your time. You know all this. You are wasting your time. You don't, you have a, don't worry. Leave them. Just be praying. Say pray in the season. <laughs> that is why we are not completely breaking codes. I have people in this church. All they do is pray. They don't read the word. They don't worship. All they do is pray. And I have people in this church. All they do is the word. They don't pray. You cannot fully be functional in your spirit like that. 44. Yeshua. What are you calling him? Amasia. Lion of Judah. Agone Jemba. Do you know what Agone Jemba means? Do you know what he means? I think he means the lion that guides the universe. <laughs> hey. Listen. That's why you have to be at shift with your pencil and your paper. There are levels you will pray, a level you will pray to. It will look like you and God are having a conference meeting. But many times before we break that code, we, we stop. Say, I've, I've done 30 minutes. I've done 30 minutes. It's time. Tell your neighbor it's time. Tell your neighbor it's time. I want to give you an opportunity to pray. So that God can unlock some mysteries to you now. See, if you when they start singing that song, you feel like singing it, be singing. Feel like dancing, be dancing. If you feel like worshiping, lie down. It's your father's house. If you feel like praying, pray like this is the end of your life. My dad gave me only two advice when I was going to school. The first one, read like there's no God. So it's not God that will make me fast. Huh? Read like there's no God. Number two, pray like you don't know ABC. Do you understand that? That's the advice I have for you. Worship like you don't know how to pray. Pray! 